Well, it's been a few minutes, but welcome back, everybody. It's been a few 60-second intervals, but we're back doing more uh, Stimpyland commentaries. Uh, we're actually going to answer questions at the end of this episode today. So, yeah. But before we do that, we've got some some videos to get to. You know, you know, just we'll get through these videos pretty quick, and then when these are done, whatever. Then we'll then we'll do the important part, which is the questions. But Liam, are you there? Hello. Yes, I'm still here. I am still in this commentary series. Thank you for listening. Uh, yes. All yes. right. Yes. So let's go. This is the Spyro the Dragon review. Um, what was I going to say about this one? This one's going to be weird because this is my first time using the Blue Snowball, which is the microphone I'm still using. It's not the exact same microphone, but it's the same, like, kind. You know what I mean? <clears throat> like, the hmm. the exact physical microphone that was used to record the Stimpyland videos is just sitting in a box somewhere in my room because it's in my closet in my room because it's fucking... You know, it's old, and it's beat up, because I would just yell at it oh. when I was making these videos. And, uh... Well, at least it's straight, yeah. because it's never coming out of the closet. Yeah, exactly. That's good. You know, as all things should be, it's straight, not a homosexual. Uh, mm -hmm. And what else was I going to say <laughs> about this one? Oh, yeah, and this episode, the, this, this, this review, it's going to be fucking annoying, because there's going to be a really unfunny joke that's going to get repeated a hundred times. That this game is my favorite game of all time, which is funny because it's not even my favorite game of all time. My favorite game oh, of all time. Oh wait, are you talking about the one that goes favorite game of all time? Yeah, that one. Something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very impressive impression you did just there. It was very interesting. Yeah, I know. I just had to, you know, tweak just... my voice a little bit and kind of get into the, <sighs> you know, the yeah <sighs> into that lower. <laughs> yeah, ex yeah, exactly. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> so uh... gorilla speak. This one's going to be weird. And also, something that is nice about these videos, though, is that they just start. There's no more, like, minute and a half intro saying, don't watch this video. Watch this better video yes, that God. isn't even better, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Now we're going to get to this one. Uh, this one's going to be weird. This one's just... The thing is, this one is mostly humorous, I would say. Like, this one's more jokes. It's, it's not mm -hmm. so much of, like, a really in-depth analysis of the game. I feel you know like I mean? it'll be... Oh, okay. I thought I was gonna say I thought it'd be more like the CTR review where you just say like, "This is the game. I like it." Oh, it, it might. It's what I like. Either I'm making jokes, or it, it might devolve into that. But to be honest, it's yeah. been so long since I've seen this, I don't remember. I remember a few of the funny gags from this. <clears throat> uh, some of them I think is like kind of funny. Uh, some of them I don't like. I do like you know. I'll just spoil this one because I don't give a shit. Everybody else except you has already seen this video, so yeah. I do like. Uh, I do the poker rap at one point, you know the fucking, and I do like all the songs from Spiral One that I like, and it just sounds totally stupid. But like I the pokey rap, what the poker rap from the, the fucking shitty, you know the the English version of the shitty yeah. ass Pokemon anime. You know they did well, the pokey rap. I've yeah, I've never seen that, but yeah. Well, it's really bad, and I <laughs> and it's like. Making fun of it, I did a version of that where I sing all the songs from Spiral One that I like, like you know. But it was it was it was kind of funny. Like I, you know, I wasn't like fuck yeah, dude. The poker rap is awesome. I was like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever recorded in a video, and I think it's great. Like that was my mentality even while I was recording. Yeah. It. No, because there are times where like I put hmm, an over nine thousand joke genius. Everybody will laugh. You know, it's like <laughs> so. That's not to say like I know what I'm doing, guys. But like in this case, I did so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's go. This is gonna be weird. Well, it's it's been a while, hasn't it? What's happened since my last crash review, anyway? Well, I've gotten myself a ton of fans. Hell, I even have my own irate gamer now. Also, something Ooh. Can happen. Oof. Ooh, plus. <laughs> Who was that? Irate gamer. Who? Since my last let's crash see. Review, anyway. She's the frame. Well, I've gotten myself a ton of fans. Hell, I even have my. Oh, Jeremiah Isaiah. Oh, Jeremiah. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah. Uh, by the way, irate gamer. Okay. Well, because he was doing the crash reviews, I think, like, around the time that I finished. Yeah. And, yeah, him and I had a bit of a beef, and that will come... I Like, I know it comes up in the Spyro 3 review. I call him out, like, very specifically. Like, it's really retarded. Like, a point of criticism is dedicated, like, just to him. Like, you know, where I'm like, this yeah. is almost as bad as Jeremiah Isaiah. Or, I don't remember what I say. It's something really fucking retarded. Uh, yes. But, yeah. But him and I are cool now. Like, I've spoken to him... Not too long ago, and uh, we were friendly, and you know, yeah. 
if I ever speak to him again, you know, I'll be nothing but apologetic for this shit. Although, to be honest, I don't think he cares anymore. So, yeah, yeah anyway. My own irate oh, viewer, though. Oh, oh, also, some shit something. happened with Google+. Plus. What? I was just going to say, by, by the way, if you haven't checked up with uh, Jeremiah in a while, uh, you should check out Baby Juice. It's a fantastic album that he made. Anyway, let's you keep being, going. You being facetious, or? I mean, slightly. I don't, just the name Baby Juice. <laughs> it's, it's a Baby like... Juice. Yeah, that is a weird name. It's a weird name. Anyway, let's go. Oh, my God, wait, I just realized Google Plus. Remember when that was a fucking thing? Mm -hmm. Oof. This was happening at the time when they were fucking shoving that in people's faces. Mm hmm and ready for some more awesome reviews. So I thought I'd start my new reviews by tackling my favorite game of all time. That's right, today we're taking a look at Spire the Dragon. Cue the goddamn intro! Oh, the new intro! I am the Oh, shit! Traveling to parts unknown. Now come with me. Join this is a great intro. Join my journey to do... Things! Pat, Pat's oh, right back, man. Epic! I go! Oh, interesting. I mean, it's very well put together, but it is. You, the you thing is, it speak is in the in the fucking very like meme like, ooh, join me on my journey to do things. <laughs> I mean, like you know? we we realized while we were making this intro that it was really dumb. Yeah. To be fair, in my defense, also this is interesting because this this was made by Pat Strikes Back, but this one is a little different than the last intro. You know. Also, this video is uploaded in like fucking dog shit quality. Like. Lol. I wish someone had a better version of this. There probably is one, and it's just you do. No, you don't. Never mind. No, not for these. I have the the crash reviews in the best quality, but yeah. not these. Eh, whatever. It's the 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 video isn't good. And is it on? Yeah, seven twenty p. The video isn't good, so like fucking, whatever. Who cares? Let's keep going. Oh, and yeah, Pat Strikes Back made that intro, and he did a great job. Like with the other intros, especially you know, like because there's a different version of that intro which I think gets used later. And uh, yeah. that one's really good. And he did one for the video I did with Batman. He did a intro for that one, too. Nice. And it's pretty good. And I do like it. And I think when I realized, like, I think I'm repeating myself, but I realized that it was really stupid as I was making it. So, yeah. anyway, yeah. I, th I think... Yeah, the lottery is weird. Yeah, anyway. Did you, a, did you like, did you, like, pay Pat to, to make no, those? No, he just made it, like, I just asked him, like, you know. Holy shit. He, no, I think he was, I don't remember exactly how, if, it, if he was the one that proposed the idea, or if I did. Oh, but okay. either way. I was gonna say, hey, this dude doing fucking slave labor. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I don't remember, I, I don't ever remember being like, make me a fucking intro already, or like, finish that shit. Yeah. You know, I don't ever remember yeah. doing that, like, I'm pretty sure he was always willing to do it. Like, he could have told me no if he wanted to. So, yeah. or at least that's, that's how I remember it. Hopefully I'm remembering it correctly. Anyway, yeah, let's let's stop. I'm just I'm just putting off watching this shit ass video. <laughs> hey, Spurak. 240p footage, awesome. <laughs> also, this is the start of the Angry Birds text. I don't know if you noticed oh, really? that, if you caught that. You know, guys. Oh, is that the favorite game of all time shit? Mhm. Mm is that what yeah. the font to say? Nice. Yeah, anyway, check this out. It feels really good to be back, especially because we're taking a look at my favorite Yeah, here it is. I think I've drawn Very off long enough. Anyways, let's dive in. But first, let me tell you a story. Yeah, before we start, keep in mind that the word favorite is not synonymous with the word best. I'm not saying Spider the Dragon is better than any game out there, I am saying it's my personal favorite. We good? We're good. Spire the Dragon is a classic 3D platformer for the Sony PlayStation developed by Insomniac. Oh, nice! The, the same PlayStation. who would later go on to make Ratchet and Clank. In the game, you play as a dragon named Spyro. No duh. So we start in the world of the dragons, and an evil creature named Nasty Nork has turned creature. all the dragons into crystals, and it's your job, as Spire the Dragon, to free them. As Spyro, you have plenty of moves at your disposal. You can breathe fire on your enemies by pressing the circle button. Holy shit! However, what was that? A really brief and not overly verbose rundown of the story. Yeah, it was. Nice. I'm pretty sure I'll undo that in other videos, but let's yeah, see. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, I'll I'll undo I'll I'll undo all this work. But yeah, anyway. For some enemies wear metal armor, which can only be broken by charging. You can charge by hitting the square button, and holy shit, is charging useful. Charging makes you move fast. Look at that immediate breakdown of charging. 
This is actually like, nice. holy shit. No, look, look, look. Ready? I say, you can flame and you can charge. And then immediately I just break down charging. I don't say, there are this many levels in the game and this does this and this does this and this does this. It's like, yeah. no. We go right it's into charging by right. pressing the circle button. However, <clears throat> some enemies wear metal armor, which can only be broken by charging. You can charge by hitting the square button. And holy shit, is charging useful. Charging makes you move faster. And this is a huge help, as you can cover large areas of land very quickly. You can also cover land by gliding, another one of Spyro's abilities. Spyro can glide to cover large portions of the levels, and reach areas that he otherwise couldn't. Being a collectathon platformer, your ultimate goal is to collect the gems scattered throughout the levels. Now having to pick up every stupid little gem would be a real hassle, but thankfully Insomniac prepared. Meet Sparks, who's like Agawako of this game. But better. Sparks can pick up gems that are a small <laughs> nice. distance away from you, and goddamn is that useful. When you get hit by enemies, Sparks begins to lose his color. Getting hit once will make Sparks blue. Getting hit twice will make Sparks green. And getting hit three times will remove Sparks completely. Was I, like, sick when I recorded this? Like, I sound <laughs> like, like, listen to me, like, un unless my voice was actually just that fucking nasally, I sound like, I just sound nasally. Like, maybe, maybe my voice actually just was that annoying. Maybe it still is that annoying, who knows? I mean, I don't know. I feel like your voice is still like a little bit nasally, but not yeah, as much. Yeah, a little bit. Much but I weird. feel like this is worse, though. Yeah. Anyway, making you lose your ability to grab gems, and also making you very vulnerable. Getting hit without a sparks will kill Spyro. <laughs> there are XD other collectibles memes. aside from gems. Another feature are thieves. What was that thieves from? will steal. It's from a, uh, I think Hotel Mario. <laughs> it was like one. Of, it was. It's that's, nice. that's like one of the most common YouTube poop sources from like 2007. You know, yeah. like those really old YouTube <laughs> yeah. poops, they they would do it on I'm like not those actually, cutscenes. I don't watch like many YouTube poops. Like I don't I'm not I, I was never into that whole fucking YouTube like I did when I was like little shit. Well even when I was younger, like I never like got into that whole thing, so I don't know like what the most sourced clips are or sound bias and shit. So yeah. I don't know like any of that stuff. So far this has been surprisingly tame except for randomly calling out Jeremiah. But that's kinda yep. to be expected and we're cool now, so that so I'm not I'm not too upset about that dragon eggs and run away from you. You can get the eggs back by chasing them and using your flame attack. Then there are also dragons, a collectible exclusive to Spyro 1. The dragons have been turned to crystals by Nasty Nork, and you can free them by running up to them. After you free a dragon, you can use the spot you freed them from as a save point or just a checkpoint. Whenever you free a dragon, you also get some dialogue from them. Some will give you helpful advice, some will tell you interesting stories, and some will just thank you for releasing them. Thank you for releasing me. 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 Okay, <laughs> actually, a lot of them do this. Thank, Thank you for releasing me. It was a definite selling point back in 1998, but now, I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty hilarious. Sparrow, my friend, how about a hint on gliding? You bet. You bet! Spyro, it's great to see you, but I've got to go. Fucking... <laughs> <laughs> with these arrows like these, you can charge along with them to begin a supercharge. Supercharge? You start out in the home world, and it's got portals which lead to the other nice, worlds. Dude. Something interesting is A lot of fucking memes. Each level... A lot of funny, funny dragon jokes. A lot of funny XDs, something, yeah. Something we should mention is that they... Which is something really, really good that they did in the uh, Reignited trilogy. Yes. I first mentioned that in this video. Is uh, a lot of those dragons have much better dialogue now. Yeah. And they're all voiced differently, and they've all got their own unique designs. It's fucking fantastic. That's definitely one of like the most admirable things about those about the Spyro remakes. Is like they did Man, a really this good video. fucking job. L look at this fucking quality of the video. Like whoever ripped this did a <laughs> shit job. Seriously, <laughs> fix your fucking shit, yeah. archival boys. Come on now. Come on, like, come on, my icon, my okay. archivalians. Um, yeah. Okay. Anyway, I was gonna. Well, there's two <laughs> I, was gonna, I was. Yeah, there's two norks right there. Yeah. It's just like when Crash had four eyes. Yeah, you got really double. excited about that. <laughs> dude, I, I did. Dude, I did. Dude, dude, and yeah, like I was laughing. At I was you like, I'm like, bro, what is this dude, shit? stop now! Ha, ha, ha. I was like freaking the fuck out. It was pretty funny. And I was laughing at you. Um, I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Anyway, what are you saying? Um. I was gonna say that, uh, uh, you know, like, homicide should be legal, because I forgot what I was gonna say. Uh, awesome. yes. No, I think it was about the dragon dialogue. They give them, like, unique shit to say. Well, yeah, they give them, like, they've, they've all got, like, unique designs and shit like that as well. I think I said that's, like, the most admirable thing about those, those games, because I think 
if people wanted like a quick rundown of what we of what we think, you know, I think we're both we both like the remakes quite a bit. Reignited. Yeah. Yeah. And saying I'm kind of like iffy on Reignited, I like that game a lot. Yeah. Like it's definitely not perfect, and job. I feel like they could have done a better job, but they did like good. I think like Spyro One, mm-hmm. that remake is great. Spyro Two, like oh, one, I remember what I was gonna say that yeah. one. Okay. Spyro 3, uh, Spyro 3 is like a mixed bag because the gameplay improvements are fucking amazing, but at the same time, like, there's a lot of glitches. It's the most, like, inconsistent, like, with glitches and visuals and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. and I really don't like the cutscenes in the game. That's like, I don't know, I don't know if I want to talk too much more about Reignited, but you can say what you're going to say. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, I'm really glad that the dragons do look so fantastic. Like, they do look as good as they do in that game, because I remember I was really concerned when the initial, like, teaser trailer for the game came out. Like, way back, yeah. because they showed Nesta, like, right at the beginning, and he looked fucking horrible. You can probably throw an image of it on the screen when you edit it, if you can be bothered. Yeah. Um, But in the original trailer, Nesta looked fucking gross. He had some weird-looking fucking hat, and his head was just shaped... It was, like, all bulbous and shit. It was like how you would expect the Insane Trilogy designers to, uh, to uh, <laughs> design, like, a dragon in this game. Because it's, like, really, ever, like, there was, he had so many rounded features and shit instead of the really fucking awesome, like, angular design that they went with in the final yeah. thing, which is fucking great. Anyway, yes. you ready to get back to this fucking stupid video? Yep, already Before halfway through it. On your first visit, you can go through the entire game without backtracking once. This is one of the many reasons this game is my favorite XD. The thing is, I, like, I don't really have a whole ton to say about this video, just because it's, like, most of it's just unfunny jokes. Or, like... Yeah. Because it, competen- it is competently put together. That's it's competently like, it's... edited, I would say. Like, competently I mean, I, edited. So like... far, so far... Besides, like, the shitty, like, jokes, you like, staying on track, you're just... You're not going too in-depth in the story and just saying, like, oh, I really like this. Like, you explain how good charging is and stuff like that. You point it out, like the fucking dragons being a weird collectible and, like, them kind of not aging very well. Like, I think that's cool shit to talk about. Yeah. And like, I think that's, like, a decently put-together argument of, like, talking about how you like the game and everything like that and, like, what, like, what are the big aspects of the game and then also veering off just to be, like, you know, there was also some strange things which is just kind of, like, a, a, a an of-the-time yeah. thing. Like, this wouldn't happen, like, if you had dragons like that today, like, they are yeah. reignited. I guess, I guess, I guess the way, I guess, I guess what I'm trying to say now then is just like if i were to make this video now it would be a very different video so that's why i'm like (laughs) not super satisfied with it i mean i don't think you'd make a review of the game today you'd do something else with it like fucking no charge challenge or no flame thing like i might i would do like a video essay type thing but certainly not like that yeah not like one of these like not like an angry reviewer archetype thing you know Mm -hmm. anyway let's let's keep going there are six home worlds in this game each is home to three levels, a boss, and a flight. Boss. Are Ooh, a boss! Artisans, peacekeepers, magic crafters, beast makers, dreamweavers, my favorite, and Nasty's World. The levels are filled with dragons, gems, and occasionally thieves. Gems are scattered about and also dropped by enemies. To get 100%, you need to get all of the gems. This can be a bit of a pain since these levels get very large, especially later on. Something oh, very that I have seen too many people run into, and something that I've even run into myself, is accidentally skipping one or two gems, then having to explore every square inch of the level until I find the tiny red gem hiding in the middle of nowhere. Aside from this, the levels are rather easy and a bit lacking in variety. Levels can blend in with each other, a lot of them look the same, and there isn't a whole lot to do in the levels. Although, the game is still tons of fun. Well, obviously, it has to be since it's my f- XD. Goddamn. Yeah, I do it like There are plenty too of fun much. things to do in the levels, despite their lack- that, That's why mm-hmm. I complain about that. It's like, I, I wasn't like, oh, it's it's like XD. It's like, oh, it's an annoying thing. No, I do it like too yeah. fucking much. Like, You're it just comes beating up, a dead like, horse with that one up, joke. Like, because you used it yeah. in other reviews as well, like when you mentioned Spire 1 in your crash. Yeah. It, come, it comes up like three more times in this video, just so you know, so like- yeah. Lack of variety. The levels are very open and you I can see what you some... were trying to do. Yeah. I can see that you were trying to do the whole, you know, when it's like when you have an inside joke with your friends and you just say it over and over again and it's funny every time because you usually bring up new ways to make it funny, right? Yeah. Like if you have a dumb inside joke, but you don't bring up new ways to make it funny. You just, it's say just it the same lot. joke every yeah. single time. 
delivered it the exact same way. <laughs> yeah, fucking, it's it's annoying. <laughs> Any, I'm just, I just want to get through this fucking video. It's boring. Branching pads and some cool gimmicks. One thing I always love to do in this game is supercharge. Supercharge? By charging over a booster ramp, you could begin a supercharge. During a supercharge, you'll become invincible, and you'll also build up ridiculous speeds, making it all the more satisfying whenever you nail a supercharge. Spire the Dragon has a very smooth and steady difficulty curve. There aren't any areas in the game where I feel the game becomes significantly harder than the area before it. But if you compare the first and last level, there's a big difference. I don't know about that. The smooth curve is nice. You think so? I think. I think I think Misty Bog and Treetops are two standout levels that are way harder than anything else in the game. Yeah, and they're just in the third world. I agree. Like I think everything in Dreamweaver is a hundred. It's the fourth world, by yeah, the way. Yeah, it's the third world. Is it? Yeah, Beastmakers is oh, the fourth. Is oh yeah, I keep I've always forget that there's five. I think there's four. I think I always forget about uh, Magic Crafters every single time. Magic Dicks. Minecrafters. Ma yeah. Yeah, I forget about yeah, Minecraft. The, I forget about the Minecraft world. Yeah. Yeah, the Minecraft oh. world in Terrar in in Terraria. I almost Terraria. <laughs> in Spyro. Yeah. No, uh, um, I don't know. I just I don't have much to say about this. The thing is, I I, I kind of am seeing what you're saying though. It is like somewhat competently made. Like so far, mm -hmm. I have like aside from just the unfunny jokes, I haven't really brought up anything like. I, I couldn't really cut down this review if I wanted to. That's what I'm saying. Except mm -hmm. for the jokes. Yeah. Like, I would get rid of most of those. But yeah. yeah. Nice, but or this can be a bit jokes. problematic. Aspire isn't that difficult. Sure, newer players... Hold on, wait. Let me see what I said. Before it. But if it's fine whenever you nail a supercharge. Aspire the Dragon has a very smooth and steady difficulty curve. There aren't any areas in the game where I feel the game becomes significantly harder than the area before it. But if you compare the first and last level, there's a big difference. The smooth curve is nice, but this can be a bit problematic. Aspire isn't that difficult. Sure, newer players or younger audiences may see a good challenge, but anyone who's familiar with 3D platformers won't have much trouble with Spire the Dragon. It has its frustrating bits, but overall, it's pretty easy. A good example of this are the bosses. I don't know, the first the couple bosses. of bosses are kinda memorable, but really, they're okay at best. The boss levels play just like regular the levels, only there are no thieves, less gems, and only one or two dragons. The main attraction to a boss level is a boss, and these can range from being no pretty unique to just <laughs> pathetically easy. The bosses are Toasty, Dr. Shemp, Metalhead, Jacques, and Blowhard. Lastly, Penis we got joke. the flights. <laughs> that a was lot good. of people don't yeah. like these, but I really enjoyed them. Well, hey, what can I say? It's only my f Yeah, there you go. That was a funny joke. In flights, you fly- You had a funny joke, and then- you did that Just, shit yeah, again. an immediately unfunny joke afterwards. Man, <laughs> like this video, the, big, the quality the big, is so bad. Like the flashing, the flashing, like, penis joke and big yeah. text on the screen. That's, I like that. The Angry Birds text, yeah. Yeah, I uh, like that. Like, that's, that's, that's kind of funny, but then you just fucking interrupt right after. With I would say I definitely don't agree with some of the criticisms I've made, though. Like, Spyro the Dragon isn't a particularly challenging game, but I don't, I'm going to be honest, when I play Spyro, I'm not looking for, like, the hardest game in the world, like, you know... I am looking for a challenge. I don't want the game to just be a complete push over piss easy game. You know, like I want to have to press a button to beat the game. But at the same yeah. time, you know, like I don't play this game for the same reason I play Cuphead. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I play Cuphead to be fucking really challenged and pushed to my absolute limits, you know, while yeah. with Spyro, not really. I, I just want to kind of explore the levels and I want to hear the music. It's, it's kind of about the atmosphere. So. This is collectophone. That's the whole yeah, point exactly. of this. You go around. So, little, I, so I, I wouldn't really agree with like you know better. the idea that the that the game needs to be more challenging. Like I think it's pretty fine the way it is. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and I think Fire they cover rabbit. that pretty. I think they cover that pretty well in two and three. Yeah, where there is like the actual missions and challenges and shit, which are supposed to be difficult parts of the game, so you get the reward for it. Nah, that's yeah. the thing with like, I really don't feel like those need to be that difficult. Like. Three, for example, is way too fucking overboard with how hard. Three goes, three goes overboard with yeah. all the different gameplay styles and how like some of them are really fucking hard. You know, like mm -hmm. like three has like that boxing mini game, which is really fucking challenging. Well, we could, we should, we should, we should get into that when we do Spire Three. Okay. I mean, I don't like. Yeah. It, it's kind of relevant to what I'm talking about now, though. I just wanted to say, I feel like. Yes. Just as far as I don't think collectathons need to be super challenging. That's just what I want to say now. Yeah. Because I feel yeah. like three does try to be like really fucking hard, and it's like I don't I don't need a a, a collectathon to challenge me like that. 
I don't need yeah, like a like... super difficult boxing simulator. You know, like you could put in a little boxing yeah. simulator as like a nice little distraction. In, yeah. in some, those in some, in, yeah, in, like in yeah, fucking levels are they're really shit. Yeah, because in Sonic Mania, for example, they uh, there there's one part where they do a a little mean a mean bean machine mini game because there was a Robotnik's mean bean machine, which was a clone of I think Puyo Puyo Tetris or something. It's like a little Tetris mini game in Sonic Mania. It's <laughs> one of the bosses is a reference to that game, but it, they make it piss easy. It's really fucking easy. so long as you all kind of know how to play Tetris, you can beat the boss. Yeah. You know, it, it would it would it would bother me a lot if they ex- if they suddenly put you on like level one hundred Tetris level shit, you know, <laughs> against in Sonic Mania because that's not the kind of game I signed up to play. Yeah. So that's what I want to say. I don't I don't I don't really think that these games need to be super challenging. Also, Spyro doesn't have a head. Uh, let's continue. <laughs> XD. In flights, funny you joke. fly around in all directions, up, down, left, right. Put your left foot in, put your right foot fucking out. In flights, you gotta fly around and complete tasks in the level. What was that? These tasks may be flaming all the time. Hold on, just pause. Like this is what you did. You, you did. You did your. Uh... <laughs> yeah, there you, you go. One of those. I see. I liked that. Was that the fucking Macarena or whatever the fuck it is? Fly around and. I think it was. I think it was a picture of the Macarena, but what you were uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, describing was, was a like, completely else. different. Thing. It's the what is it? The fucking. It's that stupid like thing that's like fucking. What is it? It's like the. It's like whatever that shit is. Is it? No, it's not. No, that's no. the chicken the dance or whatever. Oh, it's the hokey pokey. That's it. It's the hokey pokey. Yeah, I don't think you that put was your a left picture. foot in. Oh, yeah, I think that was a picture of something else. <laughs> Down, yeah, left, right, put your left foot in, put your right foot fucking out. <laughs> in flights, you gotta fly around and complete cool. tasks in the level. These tasks may be flaming all the trains or flying through the rings. You get gems for completing these tasks, but in order to get 100%, you need to do all of them in one run. A lot of people thought these are unfair, and yes, they took a bit of getting used to, but when you get the hang of them, they're pretty easy. It's not like these <laughs> flight levels are completely stupid and out of place or anything, no. Spyro has wings. He's a dragon. It works. Even though Spyro the Dragon is rather sim- That's something that I- that's another thing I would say, is I don't think- I don't need a huge excuse for, you know, a different gameplay style, it's so long as the gameplay style is actually implemented well. Like, yeah. like Crash since the beginning was always going between different vehicles and doing all weird shit, you know? Even in Crash 2, mm-hmm. he's riding in a jetpack and stuff like that. How how does yeah. how how does a, a a bandicoot in a jackpack make sense? You know that doesn't make any fucking how sense. Does, how does how does it make more sense than a bandicoot in a plane? Yeah, it really doesn't. Or a bandicoot riding on a polar bear. I don't think yeah. I need a fucking excuse for why the why the character should be doing that. I just think mm-hmm. it needs to be implemented well. And yeah. in the case of warped, a lot of those styles, a lot of those levels are just not designed well while in Spyro they designed these pretty well so mm-hmm. yeah that's that's another criticism that I think doesn't make any sense but let's keep going simple okay very simple it's still my f- wow that was funny I okay, said yeah. Yeah. why is that is it because you can complete each level in one run is it because I'm just so good at it is it because it's nostalgic to me <laughs> All of these are good guesses, although if I had to pin it down to just one reason, I would say that the definitive feature of this game, to me, is its soundtrack. Hmm. Spyro's soundtrack is my favorite Soundtrack! <laughs> okay, see? I, I, so I, yeah, I, I put, cha- I put you a change it up. That's... I put a spin on yeah. the joke there, that's what I should have- I should have done that way less, and that's the only other time this joke should have come up. You know? Mm-hmm. That- that's- that was like- that was like a, a somewhat okay implementation of this joke. You could have done it once at the start when you say that this is my favorite game of all time, and then do it once now yeah. for the soundtrack joke. But all of the others in between, they shouldn't be there. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking stupid. <laughs> and this, this Angry really Birds excessive. text is, like, pissing me off. Because I don't know why I <laughs> thought it looked good. I'm stupid. Anyway, let's keep going. I have my definite favorites in Spyro 2 and 3. With Spyro 3, it'd either be Molten Crater or Icy Peak. Hmm, interesting choices. Yeah, we both, we both, we both did a, a fucking beefy. Hmm. hmm. Dude, we just fucking became Minecraft villages. What's up, my, my Minecraft villager <laughs> brothers? <laughs> yeah, fucking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just became Minecraft villagers. Uh, fucking. <laughs> my favorite sound so- song from Spyro Three. Fucking Evening Lake. 
With Spyro 2, it'd be Sunny Beach. How evening like, evening like, eh. Mm -mm. You're stupid. I, I like I like that song, but no, evening like or bamboo fucking... terrace. I forgot that one. Bamboo terrace. Yeah. Bamboo terrace is definitely Spyro two. It would be probably the homeworld themes because I'm a fucking sunshine beach. A little sen a little sentimental boy. Dude, sunshine beach. Though. Sunshine beach. Yeah. Yeah, sunshine That's beach. My goddamn intro music. But with Spyro the Dragon, damn, damn. Oh, fuck, guys. There are so many I can't even choose. This oh, dark desert town square, Dr. Shem Toasty, Twilight Harbor, Misty Bot, Alpine Ridge, North Cove, Haunted Towers, Bright Canyon, Beast Maker, Street Tops, Wizard's Week, Lofty Castle, Ice Cavern, Cliff Town. That was fucking hard to do. The music was composed <laughs> by Stuart. <Cook. laughs> nice. That was fucking see like that. That was that was kind of adorable. Yeah, it's so stupid. Yeah. It's like it's so dumb. I can't get mad at it. Because I, I like knew how I, you fucking I knew the at the time. Yeah. At the end as well yeah. on the last one. Yeah. Like Ice Cavern, Cliff Town. Like you fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart Copeland, look, there he is. The police. Copeland, who was also the drummer of the oh, band, the police. Me. I gotta tell you, Stuart's got a way with music. The music <laughs> of this game is just <laughs> phenomenal. I feel like I can just see Stewie over there, just sitting down and composing this like <laughs> nothing. Probably because he did just Stewie. that during an interview with Stewie over there. I pretty, yeah, I'm you pretty like sure, fucking I'm pretty address sure. him as if he's your best friend, that's great. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that was a reference, like an inside joke. I feel like that was between me and Pat or something. Like a little inside okay. joke. I feel like that's what that was. I could see Stewie over there. Or maybe it wasn't him. Maybe it was... I feel like that was an inside joke. Or maybe it wasn't. Maybe I just... Maybe I'm just weird. I feel like... I feel like that was an inside joke, though. This game is just phenomenal. I feel like I can just see Stewie over there, just sitting down and composing this like it's nothing. Probably because he did just that during an interview with Playstay Underground back in 1890. Playstay? <laughs> Fuck, this is old. I remember this. Yeah. They pay me for this. There are just so many. <laughs> that was they good. Yeah. That was this in blood. Yeah. <laughs> you have some that, good that's, jokes. That's, in here. That was good. I like. Like, I'm not even. That's just a funny joke. That's great. That was great. They still Copeland is the fucking best. They pay me for this in blood. Yeah. Any great songs, and I don't think I'll have to rap a second time to emphasize this to you. Certain songs are iconic and memorable, like the title theme. Then there are ones that are also upbeat and badass, like upbeat. Wizard that, That's That's one thing that I st think is still true. Oh my god, this video quality is so bad. That's something that I think is still true, is here, I, I don't know how to talk about music without saying it's either upbeat yeah. or not upbeat. Yeah. That's how you define music, right? Yeah. If something is, <laughs> if something is upbeat fast or downbeat. With, Happy music, sad is, music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fast paced or slow. That, that's how you define it. Which was That's, later used yeah. by Copeland as the credits music to The Amanda Show. <laughs> this game's music has such a. <laughs> what was that? That was fucking. Like that, that was song for Breaking, what was that music? That was a song for fucking Breaking Bad in the first episode. I remember that. Okay. <laughs> it's fucking like the loudest, most intense song I've ever heard. It's like, I just put it. I, I like the way that was. That was done. That was, that was pretty XD, in my opinion. It gave me a big XD anyway and recognizable style what? that it's impossible not to fall in love. Hell, the entire game has this unique style. Both this ancient but also timeless look that it really doesn't share with any other game. Maybe that's why it's my Oh my god, that was fucking funny. LOL. <laughs> I can say so much more about this game, but there's only so much that I can condense into a single review. This game means so much to me on a personal level. Keep in mind, it's my that, that was funny. That was that was very oh, funny. Oh fuck! Here it comes. Oh again. my god, dude! I wasn't kidding when I say mm. I really fucking. Am I gonna at least? This I should at least acknowledge. Like, I hope I. I hope I would fucking acknowledge. Like, yeah, okay, this is getting old. That would be like. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, I don't think I do. I think I just put that in there ten thousand fucking times. It's just one of those games that I could play over and over and never get tired of. If I was forced to play one game for the rest of my life, Crash I honestly racing. think that this would be that game. Now to answer the age-old question, does Spire the Dragon still hold up? Absolutely. Nice graphics, open levels, tons of- Oh yeah, I, the, I, at this point I had completely retired the rating system. And I don't oh, right, remember yeah. exactly when I mentioned, like I don't know if I-, I So made, now, if I now you're another, just- yeah. So now your, your, your way of evaluating games is just- does it hold up? Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. Which is which I think which is I think better, is a yeah. much better it's a much better review style. Yeah. Exactly. I think that's a much better review style for everything, even for like anything online. 
whether you're the rating uh, games out like about... ten or or fucking I think, seven I think or anything a lot of is just retarded. I think if you're talking about like music, games, film, fucking books, like whatever the fuck you're viewing or whatever you're talking about, you're like you're, I think, yeah, you're viewing chairs. You know, yeah. so like this one's got like a nice smooth maple. Um, it's got a it's got a very Does this uh, good chair like, polyester. Still hold up? Like, yeah, that's what you're yeah. saying. Well, it's, because, it's, because yeah. if it's poorly made, it'll fall beneath your weight. You know, does it still hold yeah, exactly. you up? Exactly. There you go. Yeah. Look at that. That was some uh, cute little but not, improvisational not skills just, right there. <laughs> not just does it hold up, but I feel like if you're reviewing shit these days, it, it should just be more of like a. Is it do good? I think this is good? Yeah. Yeah. Is it good? Well, is it bad? Know, how good yeah, is, yeah, is it? How bad is it? it? That's yeah. the point of the review. Uh, but I, yeah, I really it, just it hate fucking being yeah. like. This game is a seven, and this game is an eight. It's like, what the fuck's the difference? Or this what game is, is a number out something? of seven, or out yeah, of ten. Sorry, it's yeah. all fucking stupid. I'm glad I. I well, don't no, that's do what that I'm saying. Out of even, like, I'm talking about out of ten. Out what's of 10 the difference is also between dumb. a seven? Like, if you put out of ten in your videos, you're stupid and should be shot in the face. What's the difference? What's the difference between rating something a seven and an eight? Like, what is the what? What makes it a, a score higher or lower? Like, it, it, I don't know. I just don't really like. It's it. completely arbitrary. Based, yeah. I don't like numerical based fucking rating scales or, or, or using like A minus B and all that shit either. I don't like it. Yeah. Anyway, let's keep going. Yeah. The shit to collect, the pleasant lack of backtracking, and the awesome music. This game is just goddamn awesome, and it's my first game. I say. Oh, well, yeah, that was it. There you go, you know, a little bit better. Jokes, now. yeah. Also, was... my voice just fucking destroyed itself then. My hey! Jokes are fucking. Thanks for watching this review. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship, so go down there and hit that subscribe button for me. To all Adorable. the people living in the future, hello! You can click the annotations to see my reviews of. Annotations don't fucking exist anymore. You fucking bitch. <laughs> Spyro 2 and 3. Also, you said, you said, you said, to all the people in the future, hello, but you should have been saying, <laughs> to, to all the people in the future, I'm dead! <laughs> to all the people in the future, help! Help me! I'm help. fucking dead! No, because help. I think I was alluding to the, the Spyro 2 and 3 reviews existing. Uh, yeah. You know, and you could have clicked the annotations, but as of the first uploading of this video, those reviews didn't exist, so. Yeah. Hello? Also, annotations don't exist anymore either, so this is aged well. To all you present day folks, they're still gonna take a bit. Until of Spyro 2 and 3. What's that voice? To all you present day folks, they're still gonna take a bit. Until then, feel free to leave a comment. Oh, yeah. Love it? Hate it? it? Let me know in the comments below. Just don't be a douche about it. Well, looks like I made this awkward enough. See you next week when I review Spyro hey, 2. Hey, someone put the ending card. They did that. Nice. Oh, but it's flipped. They did that. It's flip flop. You're a fucking flip flopper. Look at that. <laughs> Any meme at the end? I like I I like. Oh. Nope. Anyway, what were you gonna say? I like I like how you say you know, love it, hate it, like leave your thoughts in the comments below and stuff like that. Just don't be a douchebag about it. So you know, I think I think I think Michael back then should have uh, practiced what he preached a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're telling me. Just don't be a fucking You're asshole. A fucking but I will. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be an <laughs> asshole, but you don't be an asshole. Literally, the video started with me making fun of Jeremiah. And then I'm like, you guys, yeah. fuck you. Anyway, let's, let's keep going. Spyro 2 this time. Well, that's it. Yeah. Spyro 2. Well, hold on, yeah. hold on. Uh, Penis break? Penis break, yeah. <laughs> All right, folks. Spyro 2. We just uh, got done breaking our dicks, but but we put them back together <laughs> and we're ready to watch this video. Uh, it's unfortunate this video was fucking archived in 2006 mode quality. I suppose I can't really complain since, you know, it's kind of my fault. But whatever, we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about that. That's okay. That didn't happen. Uh, let's let's just watch this video. Here we go. Now oh. you might not know this, but Spire the Dragon was my. Oh, oh shit! Okay, okay, I get it. I get it. I went a little overboard with that joke. Oh. Anyway, let's oh. let's get that self reflection, dude. Self, no way. Yeah. Heck yeah, dude. Get off the screen now. Okay, yeah, yeah, yep, there we go. Anyway, Spire of the Dragon was a little PlayStation platformer that was simple. In fact, it was very simple. In many places it lacked in variety, and it was very, very easy. 
These were problems that could be remedied by the time a sequel came along. Does Spyro 2 rise proudly over Spyro 1, or is it going to be another Jack 2? <laughs> Let's dive in and find out. Jack 2. Cue the equally impressive but also brand new intro created by Pat Strikes Back. I am oh, here it is. Here, here's the, nice. see I told you Pat redid the intro, and this one looks very good. Except for the fact that this video is archived in fucking shit-ass poo quality. But trust me, yeah, it looks like, I have face. like the original video, and it looks, like it doesn't look this pixelated and shitty. Like it looks good. But yeah. Yeah. Traveling into <clears throat> parts unknown. Now come with me. This is so stupid. <laughs> Join me on my journey to do things. Away. Like this, my, my eyes light up. Holy shit. Oh. Yeah, look at that. Fucking. What do you think of that? That was good, right? That's great. Yeah. That's that's really good. Well, you really know, well you know done. what I like is the the flashing images behind the text because that was that yeah. I, we always kind of our idea with that was that was like a reference to the old intro because it was just a bunch of really fast images. So it kind of yeah. we well Pat did it and you know I think I, I don't remember, I think I had the idea but it might have been his idea to to do that to put my phone just went off fucking uh to put that you know on the screen fucking mm. yeah anyway. Whatever. Let's go. Spro 2. Hell yeah. This is just... I mean, not that anyone gives a shit. 5 out of 7? About me. This is 5 out of... This is my favorite platformer. <laughs> favorite game of all game. time! Yeah, it's my... Favorite platformer of all time! <laughs> yeah, there yeah, you go. One of those. Nice. It's, it's my favorite. Uh, uh, this is though. definitely my favorite Spyro game. I would I say that. I, I definitely Sorry. could say now that I I much prefer Spyro two to Spyro one. Although I still do like Spyro one a lot. I still have a soft spot for Spyro one, but Spyro two I definitely like more. Anyway, let's yeah. let's let's go. I don't know why I'm remembering this right now, but I remember one time someone accused me of stealing footage from a speedrun, and I got, like, really, really fucking angry. Like, irrationally <laughs> angry, which was funny. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know why I'm remembering that just now, but I just am for some reason. Also, this doesn't look like speedrunner footage. No. Because I'm walking around Not and shit. All. You fucking prick! Whoever the fuck said that? <laughs> I fucking remember you! I'm coming to beat your fucking ass! Right? You fucking asshole! Fuck you! Anyway, let's see. God! Yeah, seriously, I'm okay. fucking pissed. <laughs> Whoever the fuck thought that was a good idea, you motherfucker. Anyway, let's let's go. Hello everyone, the Stimpyland here, back for another review. Today, we're taking a look at Spyro 2, Ripto's Rage. Keep in mind guys, Spyro the Dragon was my favorite, and favorite is not synonymous with best. Spyro 1 may have been my favorite of the original trilogy, but Spyro 2 is definitely the best. Spyro 2 takes place not in the Dragon Realms, but instead in the world of Avalar, and we are greeted by three... <laughs> ...named Alora, Hunter, Oh, dude, look, you fucking listen to... ...that Wayne song. Yeah, fucking Don't Laugh, I Love about? You. Yeah. Listen to that song. Yeah. Three of the... <laughs> <laughs> that just sounded like... <laughs> The way that yeah. sounded in your microphone was funny. I think it was anyway. Let's. Good. I just want to get this shit ass video. Look at how bad this vid this video looks. Like, what the fuck is this? Look, a hunter <laughs> has two noses fucking... and no the eyes. Hunter, hunter is coming. <laughs> you know. <laughs> anyway, let's. Yeah. let's... They were testing a new super portal, and everything is going great until they accidentally teleport in three mysterious-looking characters, who are also the game's main antagonists. There's Crush, a blue Riptock carrying a club, Gulp, a green Riptock with a jetpack, and a little midget Riptock named, you guessed it, Ripto. Upon entering this new world, Ripto decides that he will take over Rip all- Riptox? Is that what they're actually called? I have no idea. I don't know. I feel like they might have been called that in, like, some weird promotional material, but not in the game. It's not really relevant information, but- It's never- it's never mentioned, is yeah. it? Yeah. Maybe in, like, some weird promotional material or in the fucking manual or something, who knows. Who cares? I mean, even in, uh... What? Sorry, I just really quickly pulled up the... Wiki. <laughs> it says it says that they're dinosaurs. That's... <laughs> it just says... Species dinosaur. 
So, I mean, a dinosaur cool. is a really they, broad like that's that's a broad categorization. Yeah. That's like species bird. It's like no, there's like a thousand species of bird, you know, because there's parrots yeah. and finches and shit, you know, like you mm-hmm. can't just say bird, you know, you can't just say dinosaur. Also, I just fucker. I just learned something. I just learned something from from uh, watching uh, this from looking at this wiki. Uh, apparently, Crush and Gulp are also voiced by Greg Berger. Those sound effects, the fucking yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Hold on. No, it sounds more like. You know, Whoa, that, was, that, that was a very good impression. <laughs> yeah, you're really killing it sound. today. Like you, your voice sounds yeah, like dude. great. Like yeah, you've been thanks, taking like man. singing lessons or something. You know, seen a speech therapist. Uh, a speech. <laughs> yeah, a speech therapist. A speech. Yeah, that's yeah. what's happening. Okay. All of Avalon, <laughs> using the energy from the orbs, and rename it Riptonia. To prevent Ripto from taking over Avalar, Alora had her friend Zoe, a fairy, get her and all of her fairy not friends to spread the orbs all over Avalar. A furry, yeah. So a race is started not, between... Not, not necessary to explain this. See, I, I undid it and yeah, I undid it. He undid it. I, I said <laughs> I was gonna undo it, and I undid it. See? I know what I'm doing. Yep. The... Uh, and Ripto, to see who could collect all the orbs first. It seemed that all hope was lost, as Ripto would be the obvious winner. Until Alora and the Professor came up with a brilliant idea. Meanwhile, we find ourselves back in the Dragon Realms alongside Spyro and Sparks, who have had nothing to do since their last battle with Nasty Nord. Spyro and Sparks are bored, so they want to go on vacation. Conveniently enough for them, they see a portal to Dragon Shores. Thank you for explaining this fucking cutscene. Ugh, it's so boring. Why do you do this? (sighs) This isn't funny. This isn't fucking funny. Rush in faster than you can say. The special ed teacher is retarded. <laughs> what <Your> the turn- <laughs> fuck? Oh, the special that? ed teacher. This fucking cult of Dusty. That guy's fucking. That guy's fucking loony. That guy is like this fucking super insane fucking atheist. That's like just. He's like the most insane fucking lefty in the world. And I remember I would used to see like videos of him, and I was like, this guy's just yelling a lot. I had no idea what he was talking about. Usually, he was just a loud fucking guy. Faster than you nice. can say, the special ed teacher is retarded. <laughs> like Dragon Shores, and rush in faster than you can say, The special ed teacher is retarded! We return to Avalar, now in the world of Glimmer, to see that the professor teleported Spyro into Avalar to help them get the orbs before Ripto. Already, this game is looking much better. First off, we have an actually interesting story this time around, which is integrated into the game much better than before. The voice acting has also improved as well, since we, one, finally get a female voice in a Spyro game, and wow. two- Fucking diversity oh, is dude. our strength. Oh, diversity, please. Yes, oh, baby. I need female voices. I need that smooth, smooth, soft. Is it working, Professor? I need that. Yeah, I need that yeah, in my I life. See. Uh, fucking... That's a really weird point to bring up. What am I gonna... I wonder what I'm gonna say now. Like, because... I feel like I wouldn't mm-hmm. bring that up unless, like, there was a point. Like, I was going to make a joke out of that. You're, you're just gonna be like, you know, it was so fucking impossible to come while playing Spyro One. There just weren't any, you know, soft, oh, I disagree. sultry I had a voices very easy in time my coming ear. when playing Spyro One. I was looking at his ass the whole time because Spyro's got a big, fat, you're sexy right. ass. So I don't think it's fair. Whatever. Let's just keep. But it you going. need that. You need you need that smoothing, sultry voice to go along with it. That's the yeah. thing. You need you need. Is the, it working, Professor? You... Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Are we gonna do the jerk? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fucking. Thing has also improved as well, since we, one, finally get a female voice in a Spyro game, and two, we have Tom Kenny voicing Spyro now, who is also the voice of Spongebob. What the fuck? So that's pretty damn cool. Oh you bet. Now we get to start playing, and holy shit! The controls are really good. Spyro 1 has- the video, like, broke for a second, because it was just fucking quiet. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck happened to this video? But no, that was- that was funny. XD. Yeah. Excellent controls. Do we- do we want to mention, uh- our incredibly funny dro- j- joke, joke, joke about uh, the professor and Lalora's interaction in the first cutscene of Spy Two. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> okay, so it's uh, <laughs> it's. No. Is it working, Professor? Almost there. Just a few more minutes of me charging my dick and. Oh my god, I did it! <laughs> I came in a fawn! <laughs> okay. You missed the part, <laughs> but you saw the professor's cock. It had balls Sorry. like <laughs> this, and a shaft like this, and a penis that spit semen like this. Puh, puh. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was the yeah. that I did forget it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> this is so <laughs> fucking stupid. Let's just finish this fucking video already. Those controls could have been copied into this game, and I honestly wouldn't have been that upset. But Spyro 2 said nope and gave us brand new controls, and believe me when I say that they are extremely tight. Spyro moves tight, much like more pussy. satisfyingly than before. Every Hell movement yeah. feels so Boy sharp pussy. and precise, and the game allows for some extreme accuracy. There is never a death in this game that I felt could be attributed to the controls. They are just so dead on. Spyro can now also jump while charging, and this really helps. Yes, Spyro could jump during what? a charge in Spyro oh, 1, okay. but not nearly high enough. Spyro can now jump much higher during charges than before, allowing him to ease through the platforming. It feels very smooth, which contrasts the stop-and-go traffic style of Spiral 1's platforming. Movement is much more fluent now, and the rest of the game benefits as a result of this. As we continue through level 1, we see more improvements. Now this is interesting, because it's like... I kinda know what I'm talking about, and I kinda don't. Mm. I don't know how to describe it. Like, it's weird. I like- it's weird- it's weird how you, like, explain with the charge, like... Spyro can jump now while he's charging, and then you say like, "Yeah, you could jump in Spyro One while charging, but it wasn't as good." I don't know why you d didn't just like f fuck all that, you know? Oh, it wasn't as good in Spyro One. It's just jumping while charging in Spyro Two was a lot better than the first game. That's all you had yeah. to say. There's a weird little verbose. Well, I would have. What I probably could have done is make a little joke out of it. That's what I would do with like jumping in Spyro yeah, One. Because like, like eh, eh, he does a little fucking yeah. He tries to get off the ground. He can't. You know? Yeah, yeah, jumping in Spire 1, jumping in Spire 1 is kind of just like... <laughs> While jumping in Spire 2 is like... Yes! Okay, enough with Something the fucking like that, voice right? mod. It was funny. I got it. Okay. <laughs> I got it. Okay. The joke's fucking funny, alright? Favorite game of all time, funny joke. Sure. It's like, yeah, yeah. we got it. You, Favorite you're beating it into the ground. You're beating... You're beating the fuck out of it. Beating a dead horse. Beating That's a big it. cock. I mean, let's go. Now, we have dialogue. Yeah. Each level has a small backstory, making each level unique and much more memorable than before. In the later levels, we even get little in-game intros and outros to each level, which really gives Spyro 2 a strong sense of depth that seems absent from Spyro 1 and 3. What I always loved in Spyro 2 is that there isn't just a stock enemy that's seen throughout all the game. There are instead many different types of NPCs that are NPCs. seen throughout the different levels. These NPCs give Spyro 2's levels more life, and they also help in connecting the levels together, despite how aesthetically different they can be. A good example of this are in the levels Breeze Harbor and Zephyr, where your allies in one level become the enemies in another. It's just that little extra attention to detail that really makes Spyro 2 shine. As nice as the dialogue is, it can be a tad bit irritating. Sometimes, not all the time. This is really only a problem with the first couple of levels, but tutorials can be annoying. It's not like the tutorials are optional, like you can just run up to them and they say press triangle to hear a hint or anything. They will just stop you short and start giving away tutorials. This isn't too big of a problem, as you can skip these pretty quickly, but in areas where you're just trying to charge through, it can be quite bothersome. It breaks up the action and ruins the otherwise fluent feel of the game. Like, look here, I just opened a bridge, I'm gonna run up to that lizard and... Tutorials. Oh, this, this meme. Ooh. I'm not happy, Bob. Not happy. He got away. <laughs> Fucking... When it's not breaking up the action, it can <laughs> add a lot to the game. It's a good movie. Although, it can also get a bit... Bizarre. Yes. Well done! Have this! If you stare at it long enough, you might not see anything. I thought the Yeti was <laughs> tougher than that. I guess he was all bark. Ro -ro. <laughs> Thank you for releasing me. <laughs> that was the time around. Have much more. Oh, no, nice. Fucking John. <laughs> That's a clip from John from the fucking Let's Plays. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> like, that, for some reason, I find that shit really funny whenever. Like, old Let's Play clips. That's just my bias, like, yeah. just because I, I remember them pretty fondly, you know? Like, those memories are a lot more wholesome than these, which just, like, I feel like these videos are kind of retarded for the most part, you know? But those, like, they're just, they're just a lot more wholesome. They're just stayed as a Let's Play channel, dude. Uh -huh. Fuck yeah. But, uh, no, but I, I like those clips, like, whenever I hear those. Yeti was yeah. tougher than that. I guess he was all bark. Ro -ro. <laughs> Thank you for releasing me. <laughs> the levels this time around have much more content and much more to do in them, as there are many more collectibles. Gems make a return, and they are found scattered across the ground. Gems also play a much more important role than before. You don't collect gems just for the sake of collecting them, but you instead collect them to progress through the game. Spyro 2 introduces a character named Moneybags, who will help you by opening paths in the level and granting you new abilities, but only for a small fee. A small fee? A small fee? A small fee? Now, gems have an actual use. Hold on, can I just... wait, hold on. 
what the f this so someone actually accused you of fucking stealing footage from a speedrunner yep why why would you use <laughs> okay. why would i have footage of the like why would you, you have footage yeah. of like yeah of the fucking like the dialogue with money bags not skipping through it like not fucking like mashing x yeah to like quickly skip through the dialogue that's like i do that I, I don't speed really on the game but i do that you know Bro, Maybe sorry. I'm just I just Fuck, stole what? it from a very no I stole it from a very incompetent speedrunner, you know like mm -hmm. number three hundred and twelve on the Spyro two leaderboards I stole his speedrun and used the footage you know yeah anyway uh yeah picking up gems feels much more satisfying now as it is much more rewarding as you progress through the game you unlock new abilities for Spyro such as the ability to swim climb and do a head bash. If we're going to talk about swimming, then let me proudly state that Spyro 2 hits dead center with the swimming controls. Water controls is something that many games struggle with, but Spyro 2's swimming controls are fantastic. Again, just like on land, I have never attributed any of my deaths to poor control. It's just fucking perfect, really. Gems are no longer dropped by enemies like in Spyro 1, and this is fucking great. You can finally calm down, you don't need to worry about killing enemies. However, killing enemies will still yield a reward. Enemies will instead drop shiny things which can be used to unlock power-up gates power-up gates will give you a power-up for I don't a know what you so, like awkward but like oh, 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 uh, shiny things yeah I don't know because I'm pretty sure they say the name of it spirit called, like, fucking spirit I, I just didn't yeah, remember spirit there you go. nice don't worry about it Fine. these can be immunity to lava a more powerful flame attack the ability to fly or even supercharge supercharge of course with the gems comes the lovely scenario of having to search an entire level for gems only to find the obscure red gem hiding in the middle of nowhere. But believe it or not, Spyro 2 actually found a solution. By holding down all four of the shoulder buttons, you can activate the gem finder. When holding down these buttons, sparks will point in the direction of the nearest gem. And holy crap, that is useful. The gem finder is a lifesaver, and it is simply genius. Just like in Spyro 1, the levels are located in the homeworlds. This time around, homeworlds are much larger than before. Even though there aren't as many homeworlds, or levels for that matter, they have much more variety. Something you'll notice right off the bat is that each of the three homeworlds is accompanied by soothing ambient music. Oh fuck yeah, dude, this fucking music. I just play all three of them, because yeah, they're fucking- It's good. They're pretty- It's good. Hold on, yeah. yo, guys, guys, okay, wait, here's fucking- We're turning the Stimbuland into an ASMR channel, so everyone just be quiet and listen to the, the sounds. Here you go. Isn't that sexual? By the way, which one of these is the best in your opinion? Uh, Autumn. No? Autumn, please. This one. There you go. That's the correct answer. Sorry, better luck next time. Okay. Well, Actually, no, yeah. it's Summer Forest. XD. I like that one the best. The piece of music gives the homeworld a What? Ah! Autumn Plains is fucking great! No, incorrect. Okay. Sorry, but you have the wrong opinion. I feel like you gotta you gotta correct that. You know, I'm gonna have to go back to the fucking. You got. You gotta go. You gotta go to our offices on Saturday, and you gotta take a five-hour test. You know, a, a pre-licensing mm -hmm. test, and you have to, uh, you know, correct your opinion. So, yeah. After all, you definitely know a lot more about music than I exactly, do. Exactly. So yeah. For, for, Strong for, sense of atmosphere. Doesn't get any. <laughs> I feel like I can honestly just run around in the homeworlds for hours, being put into a daze by the fantastic music. If we are going to talk about music, however, I would unfortunately have to say that Spire 2's soundtrack is the weakest of the original trilogy. Hmm. It is a bit weird of me to say this, uh? but intro music actually comes from this game. My intro music is Sunny Beach from this game, which I'm going to play over the next part because it's just so fucking awesome. Spyro 1's music was distinct, recognizable, and memorable. Spyro 3's music was upbeat, badass, and Upbeat. There you go, yeah. Upbeat. It's all- upbeat. It's all- upbeat. Also, I like how you say- up, Upbeat. I like how you say I'm going to play- you. Or you like, oh, I'm gonna play fucking Sunshine Beach over the next part because it's so awesome. And then you're playing it at like one fucking volume. Fully memorable. Like I know, Spyro obviously is... your commentary has to be louder than the fucking music in the background, but that was just like I can't even that was hear just it. bad editing on my part. Yeah. Plenty of great music as well, like the homeworld themes. As awesome as Spire 2's music can be, some of it can be pretty bizarre too. This game's music even annoyed me on a few occasions. The most prominent examples of this would probably be in the levels Colossus and Canyon Speedway. Keep in mind- I like those songs now, but I can definitely say that they are weird. Like, they, they take some getting used to. You know. Yeah. But but, I, but, I, but I'm a musical boy. I like all sorts of music now, and I, I wasn't super into music at the time, so... Yeah. Whoa! Voices in my Spyro song? No thanks. That was what you thought, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly.
mind, however, that being second place, the Spiral one and three is not bad at all. You probably, I would say, you probably I would say that, I would say that uh, probably Spiral three's music is the best out of the original trilogy, though. I don't know. I think there's a, a few select songs from Spiral three that I really, really love, but I'm not over the moon about all of them. I was gonna say though, I, de- I, 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 with, with your fucking. You know, I don't like Colossus or Canyon Speedway. I'd assume you probably didn't like Bamboo Terrace back then either. <clears throat> no, I think I did. Maybe I didn't. What? I don't know. I don't know. I just, I would have assumed you've got, you know, in Colossus the fucking... Like that shit. I would have thought that it would have, you know, your feelings would have been synonymous with fucking... To... I don't know. My my opinions were not really consistent. They were all kind of fucking arbitrary <laughs> and stupid because Canyon Speedway doesn't have a focal yeah. sample, you know. Well, it's whistling. Yeah, but it's I don't know. I I, I don't care. Fucking I don't give a shit about this yeah. fucking video. It sucks. Let's just finish it already. Music is pretty cool, <laughs> everyone. Spyro standards we're talking about. If you want to hear a truly bad soundtrack, go listen to Crash from Sandy's music. <laughs> fucking burn. <laughs> Actually. Wow, you're no, back. You made an good. irritating video. Fucking. <laughs> There's some guy's comment. Fuck yeah. Another collectible are unique artifacts exclusive to the first 14 worlds of the game. The talismans are used to open up the portals between the different worlds because the plot says so. The talisman challenges are straightforward and simple. Reach the. That was weird. Because the plot says so, and I got like close to the micro. Because the plot says so. Yeah. Because my plop says. So. Because my 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 poop. Yeah. Anyway. To the level of boom, go to the next one. Yes, but the because levels I don't speak end to my right feces. after you get the talisman, because we also got orbs. Orbs are the main collectible of this game. You get orbs for completing missions within the levels, and these missions can vary greatly. Some orbs may involve you solving puzzles, as oh. others may involve you flying. Oh shit! Around. Look at up! Look at look at a, look at the fucking badass over oh. here. Hell this is yeah, dude! Considered to be the hardest orb challenge in Spire Two, I don't think it is. Is it? I don't think so either. No. The hardest one is probably it's, I think... popcorn. Yeah. No, even that one. It, Definitely. Even that one's not that hard. I would, I would say it's the hardest though. In the original Spyro Two, I'd say it's the hardest. It one. did, yeah. I mean, At least for me. I might be remembering it poorly because I know that one got like nerfed really hard because and reignited. It's, it's, yeah. It's very random. It's very random where they show up and where Hunter is. Yeah. So that's why it's the hardest. With like this, like with the fucking the the like dinosaur egg fucking thing. It's consistent. Like it's the they they crack out of the same place every single time. So mm-hmm. it's just trial and error. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just I'm dumb. That's kind of like a that, that's that's like yeah. A you were just trying to be fucking all braggadocious and look at how fucking good I am, guys. Look at how it's good really I am, hard, guys. I'm, I'm really the fucking good. best. But please don't say mean things about me. Round and hitting targets. These orb challenges are what make each level unique, and there are a ton. Pretty much all of the orbs. Plus, are can fun. I just say what? Real quick. I don't know about. I can't remember in Reignited Trilogy. <laughs> Spyro's just fucking a, a purple mass <laughs> in the middle of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember in the Reignited Trilogy, but in the original games, uh, in Spyro 2, the first egg challenge thing is actually harder than the second one. You think? I think so, yeah. It's more consistent. I mean, the second one, it's faster. They they come out faster. You know, they they come a lot with with higher speeds. They they come all over Spyro. Yeah. Um, you're talking about the, but in the first one challenge? Yeah, this challenge. In the first one, the eggs crack in, like, a kind of, you know, obscure order. Like, the, it's it's not it's not just, we'll like, one zero final. But in the this... original? No, in, in the original. I don't think so. I think I think this one's much harder. Because this they're a lot no, faster because they just, in this one. They're a lot faster, but they the way the, the eggs that break are in order as, as you basically come up to them. As you come on them? Like, you'll see. Like... Yeah, as you as you fucking you shoot a load fucking, on the eggs and then they this crack. purple fucking mass in the middle of the screen is just <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's yeah. let's let's keep going. With a few exceptions, some of the orbs can be pretty stupid, like the hockey mini game or having to escort the alchemist. Or really, that's pretty much it for the bad orb challenges in Spyro Two. The orbs present plenty of variety that was missing in Spyro One, and they also help give this game a sense of challenge and difficulty. That is another thing Spyro Two fixed. Spyro Two is very challenging, but also reasonable. Some games, like Spyro 1, are too afraid to challenge you and as a result become too easy. The reverse can also happen in games like Spyro 3, where it becomes too ambitious in its difficulty and it becomes unjustified in the case of all the stupid vehicles and minigames. Spyro 2- t- Ambitious? Oh, ambi- I thought I said ambiguous. Ambitious. But yeah, I- I- 
ambitious. I'm, I'm try- I don't know if it, I mean, I think Spyro 3 is too ambitious a video game, but I don't know if too ambitious in its difficulty is the right words to use, but whatever. Who cares? Two, however, is spot on. I have never felt that any of the orb missions were unfair, with the exception of those two I mentioned before. Spyro 2's challenge can also be seen in some of the returning features from Spyro 1, such as the flights. The flights, now called speedways, saw a significant improvement as well. They follow the same premise from before, complete all the tasks in a level, get the gems and leave. But now, you have an unlimited supercharge, and there are also secret orb challenges, which are so much fun and give the speedways tons of depth, just like the rest of the game. The bosses also return, and god damn did they improve. Spyro 1's bosses were bland, boring, and forgettable, but Spyro 2's bosses? They are my favorite in all of 3D platforming. Bosses now take place on these arenas, and instead of fighting random enemies, you instead fight each of the game's main antagonists. The bosses are Crush, Gulp, and Ripto. Each boss is memorable and does a good job of spiking the difficulty up, preparing you for the next homeworld. Oh, and Ripto's Arena. Good god, Ripto's Arena. Ripto is my favorite final boss in any video game, period. The concept is so original and yeah. unique, and for shit's sake, just shut up and fucking buy this game already. It is genius. <laughs> well, Spire the Dragon might have been my Fuck favorite. It. Dude, of the you're the fucking Spire 2 fucking salesperson. Fuck yeah. Shut up and buy this game. I should have. I shut up or em, or emulate it. You know. Or emulate yeah. it, buy it, play it. Shut up and fucking play it, bro. It's pretty good. <clears throat> but yeah, Spire 2 ripped out. Like that's the thing. I thought about that. Like, is he my favorite final boss? And it's like I don't really know because I. I don't really I like I can't really think of any objection I've had I'd have to that. <clears throat> you know. Hmm. I mean, I can, but it's not games of plat- in platformers, yes. 100%, but I but I'm trying to think of other platformers. Any video final game final boss? Like. Oh, one platformer final boss I like. Uh well, I like the first phase of Robot SpongeBob from Battle for Bikini Bottom, but the second one is pretty stupid. You know, hmm. I like the first phase they make that of better. that boss. Yeah. Anyway. Spyro 2, Ripto's Rage, is by far the best. This game stood proudly over Spyro 1 and saw improvements in practically every square inch of the game. Better controls, more collectibles, better graphics, more interesting levels. Classic everything! Now to answer the age <laughs> question. Sammy Classic Sonic fan. Hell yeah! Who, by the way, for anyone uneducated, which is really, it was really crazy to me when I found this out. There are uh, people that don't know who Sammy Classic, Sammy Sonic, Classic fan is. Sonic fan is. No, oh. no, 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 not not that. But <clears throat> people who who don't know, he is right now. Uh, he's twenty years old, which is the, he's the same age as me. What the fuck? Which is which is fucking crazy to me because, like, when I was watching you know those videos of him freaking out about Sonic when he was like, like when when I was like fifteen and sixteen years old watching that, I always thought he was like eleven years old or something. No, like he was your age. <laughs> But no, he was my age doing that. <laughs> I remember hearing I thought, something, wow. and this is probably bullshit, but I remember hearing something like he had some weird, like, growth, like, thing where he, he, he like, didn't, he was a very, very late bloomer, you know? It was like an, a weird kind of anomaly or something. I remember hearing something like that, but I have no idea. Although it well, certainly, it certainly he's... looks that way, because he fucking was your age but he looked fucking 11 years old you know some people are just kind of late bloomers but i guess some people are fucking like yeah. really 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 i mean late i was a late yeah i was i was i was a fairly late i bloomer. was an early bloomer I bitch <laughs> damn yeah. i didn't have fucking any any i'm gonna say this on purpose because it's a funny meme i didn't have any legs on my hair yeah there um, you go. I, you know, I know you remember that one. I didn't have any hair on yeah, my nobody legs. Nobody else remembers that one until I was he, like, "That's an inside joke." <laughs> that was funny, and I'm glad you put that in this video. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. I didn't have any hair on my legs till I was like 16 or something like that. Like, and my voice was still kind of very like high pitched all the way up until I was like 16. Like, I didn't. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't hit puberty until quite late, as 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 far as most people. Most people, okay. Let's not. Okay, we're not going into fucking <laughs> puberty now. Let's let's watch Spyro Two. Well, it's almost done, thank God, because this is fucking boring. Does Spyro Two hold up? You're goddamn right. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next week when I review Spyro Three. Year of the Dragon. Look at this fucking music. Is there an ending meme? Year of the Penis. There better be an ending meme. Come on, you mean ending Come me? Come on. Oh, I'm 
jerking my dick. I don't, I don't dick. think there is. Yeah, that. it's not. There is a one. <sighs> okay. Fuck. Well, that was a oh, there that it was is. a Spyro Two review. Anyway, fucking. Mm -hmm. What do you think of uh, those reviews? The spy they were like competent, like pretty competently edited. Yeah. And no, somewhat like competently I said, they written, were... but the the criticisms don't make a ton of sense, and uh, the jokes aren't very funny. Mm hmm. I mean, there are some funny jokes in there. It's just some of the jokes you kind of fucking beat over the head. Yeah. Uh, and that's really it. Like, I don't have a ton to say about them otherwise, because it's not, like, horribly made. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm sure we'll definitely that, have a lot I more would to say. I will say that if I were to make that video now, it would be a very different video. Yeah. Yeah. And we're coming up to that fucking Wrath of Cortex video, because ne next episode we're just going to watch Spyro 3, and then when we're done with that video, we're going to watch the Wrath of Cortex video, so that'll be pretty fun. What? 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 No, that's that's Wrath of Cortex, it's W-O-T-C. What? <laughs> so fucking annoying. <laughs> Alright, let's... Hey, people call Mind Over Mutant Mum. Whatever, fucking... Let's let's get to the viewer questions now. Is there anything you want to say before we do questions? Uh, question time, question time. Somebody show me all your. No, slime. Are you sure there's nothing you want to say about this video? Theme song. Not really. I think they're good. They, you know, they were well put together. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of disagree with what you said. Great. Excuse okay. Me. Question time. It's party time, children. So, Cycrith the Squid asks, what was the breaking point that made you leave? This is a very old question from quite a few videos ago. This was I from think, the right, initial yes, this was from the initial recording of Crash Nitro Kart, uh, the the lost one. But when I went and went back and answered all of those questions, I actually skipped over this one. Uh, so to answer that question, what was the breaking point that made you leave? Uh, the thing is, it was kind of, part of it was built up over time, part of it was, you know, I, there was this just kind of anxiety around the channel, and I just kind of was, like, <clears throat> waiting for the moment to just kind of delete it, like, I was getting fed up with it, you know, I remember a few times, I, like, privated all the videos, and then, like, just unprivated them, like, a minute later, you know, because, like, I would just, like, have, like, those split second, like, you know, just, uh, fuck this, you know, I was, like, dissatisfied mm. with it, like, you know, fairly, like, fairly, like, quickly after the Twin Sandy video with Badman, when I made that, like, I remember starting to feel uneasy about it, but eventually I just fucking, uh, I just blew up at, like, one person in the comments over something stupid, I think, and then I just deleted the channel, and that was it. Well, didn't really delete it, but I nuked it. So, yeah. Uh, but I'm back now. Anyway. Thank you for the question, from... Seb bro MLG. Uh, this was in another question. This little fucker put, put a little fucking edit like, um, edit, here's another question, haha. <laughs> but it was after I already reviewed the fucking, after I already answered the fucking question. All right, I already, you know, he had, he had like two questions in a comment and then he put like edit in the third one. And it's like, fuck you, you don't get to do yeah. that. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so he says, how is Juicy, the bird from the UNO championships? Which is a funny way to fucking describe that. That was just the bird that I had, and, uh, he's still doing good. I had to move from the house, and I couldn't bring the bird with me, which is fine, because I found him kind of fucking annoying. It's not a fucking joke. Uh, but thankfully, one of, like, uh, one of my cousins, uh, was saying that he would be willing to take care of the bird, and he has, and, you know, I still will, like, hear about the bird from time to time. Good old Juicy. He was a cute bird, but he was also fucking loud and annoying. And he bit me a lot, and I didn't <laughs> like it. Uh, I realized I'm not an animal person. Like, I, I admire animals, but I will only ever do so from a distance. Uh, I am not an animal person. I, I learned that the hard way. Anyway. Thank you for the question, though. Kirby GameCube asks two questions. This first one is, Hey, Michael, love the editing of the viewer question segment. Even the little music adds a lot to it, which is good, because now I know how to edit this section. My question is, how would you feel if Crash got into Smash Brothers? Uh, I feel like you could get a potentially pretty good moveset out of uh, Crash if you put him in the game. To be perfectly honest, mm -hmm. I'm the, really the wrong person to ask, because I don't really care what characters get into Smash Brothers so long as they have cool movesets, because I played the game 
you know, competitively for, or sort of, I sort of played it. I, I ran tournaments for the game, and I got to play a lot of people that were genuinely very competitive, and I learned a lot about competitive Smash uh, for about a year while I was doing, uh, I was a TO for Geeked Up Comics and Games when we were doing the Smash events. And uh, at that, that, like, as I was sort of in that scene, I just completely gave up, like, any character loyalty, and I would just play the, I just realized, like, oh, just play the characters that are the most viable, play the ones with the best movesets. So, yeah, if, if Crash got into Smash Brothers, I think that would be pretty cool. That wouldn't make me buy a Switch, though, because I don't own a Switch, and I don't think I'll buy one. Uh, and if Crash got into Smash, I think that would be pretty cool, but I don't think they could add any character to that game that would make me want to play Smash Ultimate desperately. Uh, so, yeah. And then he asks, and why did the chicken cross the road? Uh, the question is to get to the other side, you know, but he crossed the road. He didn't, he didn't oh, cross, right. the thing is, he crossed the road and got hit by a fucking car, so he went to the other side. Yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't get that joke until, like, a little while ago, like, when, you know, fucking hearing it all the time when I was, like, a kid or a teenager. I thought it was just some dumb fucking meme, like, ha why did the chicken cross the road? It's like, ha ah, yeah, very funny. But I didn't realize that the joke in it is that to get to the other side is, yeah, he gets, he fucking, he gets killed. Yeah, he dies and he goes to the other side. He goes to hell. He goes to, he goes to the other side. He goes side, to hell, yeah. yeah. You know? Fucking little prick. Oh, uh, so that was the first question. And the second one was thought on Nitro Fueled Grand Prix mode. Uh, Grand Prix. Grand, it's pronounced Grand Prix. Yeah. No, that, that's how Paul yeah. pronounced it, and I got mad at him. By the way, what do you what, <laughs> what do you call giant penises? Do you know the answer? Uh, giant penises. No, you call them Grand Pricks. Yeah, Grand Pricks. Yeah, Grand Pricks. You know, like... Jeez. Anyway, uh... Don't know. Don't really fucking care, to be honest. My thoughts on Nitro Fueled in general, I'll just say, uh, the game looks like it's going to control fairly accurate to the original. It's not one-to-one, -one, but I don't, I never expected it to be one-to-one. -one. And I'll probably play it, and I'll probably enjoy it, but that being said, it is one of the ugliest games I've ever seen. Like, it is fucking hideous. Like, I'll put a picture on the screen. They showed off this picture of Spyro... Tana and oh, Baby T, and it is the worst thing I've ever seen, and it's kind of embarrassing that they think that that's, like, an acceptable image to release, and to show that to me and be like, yo, get excited! It's like, what the fuck? What is that shit? What are you doing? Uh, but, if you think it looks good, you can see, if you think that looks good, good you for you. You can see, you can see, like, uh, Spyro's model next to them. <laughs> like, it uses the reignited, the like, art, yeah. reignited design, yeah. And his that it's that design next to the fucking and shit, and then you got fucking Baby T, mm. which is just a actual dinosaur with like anime eyes. It looks so bad. It's so yeah. fucking bad. Like it's just embarrassing to think that's like that it looks good. But if you think it looks good, I don't fucking hate you. I just I disagree. Uh, but thank you for the questions. Anyway, Majora Cola asks. Hey man, I've really enjoyed bin watch binge watching all these commentaries. Helps me helps make study. L I can't fucking speak. <laughs> you have retard disease. <laughs> hey man, I really enjoyed binge watching all these commentaries. Helps make study more enjoyable. I got a few questions. One, funniest joke in the world? What is the funniest joke in the world? Like, what's like the hardest we've laughed at uh, something? That's just what I'm trying to think about. Because we've laughed really I know hard what it at is, but I probably I know what it is, but I probably can't say it. <laughs> if it's really bad, I'll just cut it, but just tell me. Just, just to not let people know. <laughs> I want to give context. I want to give context. You were playing some fucking game. Yeah. I was playing Warframe, and one of the weapons <laughs> the I was using yeah. was like these. Yeah, it was it was kunai, and I was just kind of. I think I was like super tired. I wasn't really like thinking about anything I was saying. I was, so I was just kind of like spouting off random shit, being like, "Oh, this enemy's got a big dick!" <laughs> like I was just saying stupid shit. And then I was throwing kunai, and then I just said to Michael, I was like, Oh, what do you prefer? Kunai, the throwing weapon, or kunai, the looking device of a Yeah, and we, we laughed pretty hard at that. I think, I think the... another, I think another <laughs> thing the that way we laughed I pretty it. hard at was, uh... And again, this m with more of the fucking evil alt-writer fucking racist jokes, but the fucking... The the, tr the stimpy Trump the land? The stimpy Trump land. No, the fucking, uh... The, the clip of that guy reacting to that Spongebob YouTube poop, where he says, uh, you know what? Yeah. He goes, neighbors. Yeah, he says, that's that's one of the best videos. Yeah. I we laughed really hard at that. So those yeah, are definitely some of the funniest good. jokes in the world. Is racist jokes. Anyway, uh, yeah. best SpongeBob episode. 
Uh, <laughs> SB129. That's the answer. Do you agree, Liam? <clears throat> um, if you disagree, you're wrong. I know you think. I know you think it's a cop out. Because it's the first wrong. episode. With help nope. one in. That or that or rock bottom. For me. Rock bottom is very good. I like those. But uh, SB129 is the best. Hands down, my favorite. Uh, because I know it used to be Naughty Nautical Neighbors, and I still like that episode a lot. But recently, I've just really been into SB129 because it's definitely the most artsy any SpongeBob episode gets, and I like that a lot. <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. Are there other reviewers other than Square Eyed Jack you enjoy? Uh, that's a good question. Fucking, I like when Pat does videos, but he doesn't really do them anymore. Uh, B Mask, Gaming Brit Show, those are two excellent channels. I would definitely recommend you check those out. Uh, Nitro yeah. Rad, I like Nitro Rad a lot. I remember he, I, I was subscribed to him when he had like fucking like 200 subs or something like yeah, that. So yeah, so was I. I remember, because yeah, he used to the have, first video he used I to have a channel, his, yeah, his... he used to have a channel called Garanicor, and I was subscribed to him while he was doing that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, I just want to, this is, maybe this goes back to the funniest joke in the world. I thought it was kind of funny. Nitro Rad, I haven't watched his videos in, a, in, in quite a while. Uh, I should probably catch up. But I remember I, I started watching him from like his very first video on there or something. But he had um he had a video on there. It's from like 2015 or 20 some, 2016 or something like that. It's called uh, Top 10 uh, like Hilarious Bad Songs in Video Games, yeah. right? And I just remember the funniest part about that whole- Like, it's a pretty good video, even though it's pretty dated, and I'm sure he probably doesn't like that video much anymore, because he's kind of, like, really established his style and gotten more yeah. of it. That, that video was pretty funny overall, but the funniest part of that video was, like, right at the end, where he, he shows an outtake from the video, <laughs> where he fucks up one of his lines. He's like, hello, I'm Nitro Rad, and today I'm gonna be counting off the top 10 hilariously bad video- No, hell- Top 10 Hilarious Bad Games and Video Songs. <laughs> so funny. Like he, says, <laughs> he says the title completely backwards, and then he's just like, he just stops and he's like, WOW! Fuck it. Fucking wow! <laughs> and then he gets like this little toy AK-47 gun and puts it in his mouth and he's shooting <laughs> and he's like, WOW! Oh, fucking bad. I remember, that was really funny. <laughs> like, you go back and watch that, It's I thought it was, because I think I was watching it like, this would have been like months ago now, but I was like re-watching his old videos. And I saw that, and I thought it was genuinely fucking hilarious. Yeah. Anyway. Thank you for explaining that. You know, little yes, thank anyway, you for next, wasting my fucking next, time. Next uh, and question. he says, thanks for the commentaries, I look forward to the rest of them. Thank you very much. And thank you for the question. Well, no, 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 no. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't answer, he said, he asked, oh, do you think there are too oh, many HD yes, remasters? yes, sorry. Do you think there are too many HD remasters? Uh... I don't have an, I don't have a problem with... Like, a game gets an HD remaster announced, then, you know, I know some people are like, Oh god, another HD remaster? I don't think that. But what I will say is, uh, HD remasters, there are too many incompetently made HD remasters. Like, the, the standards for HD remasters should be much higher. Because Ensane Trilogy is painfully mediocre, and I like Reignited a lot, but Reignited has some real problems that didn't need to be in that game. Like, a lot of the glitches and stuff in Spyro 3. But in all three games, there are glitches that can affect the gameplay, that they can... You know, make speedrunning a fucking nightmare. You know? Which I think is odd. I think that's odd as well because, you know, Activision... Obviously Activision over here is like these sorts of things, right? When it, term, when it comes they, they to... They watch these videos? The deadlines yeah, they watch long... videos. Yeah, yeah, Activision watches our videos, obviously. Uh, but when it comes to like the deadlines and all that sort of shit, that's down to Activision. And it's... I think I think it's kind of odd because... I feel like N Insane Trilogy, and I'm pretty sure this is self-proclaimed, like, I'm pretty sure they, like, it's it's pretty clear that they have said, like, like, they made Insane Trilogy as, like, a test, as, like, a, do people still care about these old franchises enough yeah. to, like, make them, you know, enough for them to sell well. Uh, and so when Crash and Insane Trilogy did sell, like, a lot, and I'm pretty, they were probably already working on the Spyro Trilogy while that was happening, yeah. but... I, I, I don't know if they were quite yet convinced that it was, like, the way to go. But when Insane sold a lot, they kind of realized, holy shit, these old series do sell really well. Yeah. People still love them. Even, like, beyond nostalgia, there is still a reason to mm -hmm. admire no, these games. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> and so that's what I don't... That's what I think is odd, because 
They did delay the Spyro series. Yeah, like, they, they delayed did, it. Uh, they delayed, delayed it so it would be better when it came out, and it was still like shitty. Like it, it's which it's I'm a good game. which I'm glad because like, I'm like, not it's sure. It's a good game, but it's like it's glitchy and shit. And I yeah, it's it's the one thing is that the games they they feel like a little incomplete. Like they feel really glitchy, and I would I'd be totally okay mm -hmm. with waiting more time for those games to be complete because that's the the one thing that you know Definitely. I would be totally willing to just throw out Spyro 1 in favor of just playing the reignited version, but there's, you know, I've encountered glitches even in that game, where gems just fucking disappear, or I fall into a, a pit and I get fucking, like, soft locked down there, you know? Like, I remember yeah. one time I fell into fucking, well, not soft lock, but, you know, I fell into a pit and I just got stuck and I had to exit the level. Because for some reason yeah. Spyro, like, wouldn't die, like, you know, you fall down a pit and he just, he doesn't hit the bottom, he's just stuck in, like, this weird area, you know? Yeah. Happening when I was playing that, and there's just, like, you, you couldn't patch that out even, like, still? Like, there's still tons of glitches in that game, and I just wish that, you know, they, they came out and they were fucking complete. You know, the original games don't really have these problems. So, yeah, I feel like there are too many incompetently made HD remasters, but I don't have... But if HD remasters were all, like, competently made and good, I wouldn't have a problem with them. Like, I say the more the merrier, so long as they're actually made well, but most of them are not, unfortunately. But thank you for the questions now, for real this time. Uh... Now, I'm RT Yule says, question, when's your birthday, Stimpy? It's a weird question. January 10th. Uh, Turbo Duelist J says, I'm so glad I found you after all this time. I'm currently going through your commentary series, and my favorite game is the original Ratchet and Clank. Fucking great, great taste. Great fucking taste. Uh, how do you feel about the remake, if you haven't already said so before? I'm still going through the Monstro videos. Uh... I'm really not a fan of the PS4 remake at all. If you see, uh, if you've ever seen the Gaming Brit shows, like kind of breakdown of that game, I agree with most of the things he says. I don't like the uh, the Ratchet and Clank Future games as well, even though I know Liam likes them a lot. I I really don't. I much prefer the PS. Like I I used to, but now I much prefer the PS2 games. And my favorite in the series is the first one on PS2. Uh, so fucking amazing taste. Uh, but yeah. Ratchet and Clank 1 is probably my favorite. This is just fucking... What? This is just fucking looking at someone else's fucking opinion of Ratchet and Clank and being like, See, this guy's right. How could you do this to me, Michael? Shut up, fag. Anyway, fucking... Ratchet oh. and Clank 1 is definitely my favorite, but I also really, really like Deadlocked a lot. I think that game is fucking fantastic. Uh, and 2 and 3 are pretty good as well. Uh, 3, I think, is probably the weakest one. Uh, but I still like 3. Uh, but yeah. yeah. And I'm not a fan of the remake, and I'm not a fan of the the future games, although the future games are certainly better than the remake. Uh, Definitely. You can't argue yeah, that. Yeah. My favorite Ratchet & Clank game... My favorite Ratchet & Clank game is A Crack in Time, which is one a of the future games. My favorite... A cr yeah, uh, Clock Blockers. I see. Um... My, my favorite PS2 Ratchet game is definitely Ratchet 2, though. My favorite PS2 anyway, Ratchet game, no the cares. best one, is the fucking first one. Bitch, anyway. Yeah, well, yeah. no one cares about my so, Yeah, move on. Thank you for the Let's question, go. Turbo Duelist J. Goonie Baloney asks, Hey man, been watching your videos since 2013. Hello. Uh, just wondering what game you now consider it your all-time favorite. Uh, I don't really, I don't know if I have one game, but if you put a gun to my set... <laughs> If you put a gun to my head, <laughs> you put a gun to my head and said you can play one game for the rest of your life, uh, definitely Crash Team Racing, the original on PS One. Uh, yeah. Man, it's just it's unfortunate that Nitro Field looks so bad. Like, I mean, the game looks like it's gonna be fun, but it's so fucking ugly. Like, it's it's yeah. a shame. I really wish the game looked like not shit. You know, like why didn't they get mm -hmm. like a, a fucking concept? art guy like you know geez like why didn't they get someone to just look at this and be like yeah fix your shit but yeah uh definitely crash team racing but other contenders are spyro 2 uh ratchet and clank 1 and half-life 1 so yeah uh, and i know liam's is bloodborne but nobody gives a shit so thank you for the question wow fuck uh and now the last question homer sams asks why do you think all your call outs in your videos are cringe like, I've always thought of those jokes as the ones that have aged the best. If we ignore your reluctance to take criticism, they are pretty funny because they're so ruthless and you just give no fucks. Uh, my, my problem, I have a problem with this question, but thank you for the question anyway, but I have a problem with this question and it is right around there where it says, if we ignore your reluctance to take criticism, like, 
that's that's a, a, a kind of tall order to ask me to ignore that because I think that's part of the thing mm -hmm. that makes it so cringy is the fact that you have someone that's just dealing out a ton of hate like criticism someone being so fucking edgy and ruthless they don't care at all they're they're ruthless they give no fucks but meanwhile you know so fucking sensitive can't take shit you know from anyone else like they can deal a bunch of shit but they can't take it so it's part of the reason why I cringe so hard at that but another thing yeah. is I feel like a lot of times I get very vitriolic and angry over stupid shit that is not worth getting angry about. You know what I mean? Like, fucking... Yeah. Look, I think it is worth getting angry. It is worth calling people retarded. It's worth saying very mean things to people over things like, you know, they... Political disagreements, basically, you know? Like, or or at the very, you know, I think I think really just free speech. Like, if someone doesn't believe in free speech, if they're like, yeah, bring on the gulags, I think free speech should be abolished. It's like, yeah, fuck you, you're garbage, I hate you, I, you know, I'll call you out and I won't yeah. feel sorry for doing so. That being said, uh, you know, I feel like fighting for, your, you know, your right to freedom of speech, your right to freedom, your right to fucking speak like a human being, you know, to say whatever the fuck you want, you know, that's a right worth defending, while getting angry at video games, it's just like a really, really shitty hill to die on. You know, it's not worth getting angry about. Sure is. <laughs> so, <clears throat> also, I, I, I think, because he, he says, you know, he think he thinks that uh, those sorts of jokes are the ones that have aged. Oh, the they best. certainly haven't. They, Why? I don't think they've cer they certainly haven't. Especially because a lot of the people that I talk shit on, I either don't have any hard feelings towards or. Uh, I'm friends with, you know, like Jeremiah and I are very friendly. Yeah. Whenever we talk, we get along, you know. So yeah. those jokes of me but saying think, "fuck yeah, you, Jeremiah, because... you, you're scum," it's like those those have aged terribly. Well, no, that's the thing though as well. I think most of the the most vitriolic shit that you've like leveled towards uh, other people, it isn't in, it like in your actual voice. I like. It, it does. I'm sure it does happen, especially in the Wrath review. And we'll get to that. It'll be shitty. But yeah. In 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 most, of, especially I the know Crash what series. I happens in the Spyro three review. review. Another call out of Jeremiah. Yeah, well, I don't know yet. Okay. Well, I don't. I don't know that yet. But yeah, I I know that like most of the ones that we've seen in throughout the regular like Crash series and shit though, you don't you don't speak about it. You don't say like insert person's name here is a fucking idiot. They shouldn't make videos. They shouldn't exist. Blah blah. blah. You just, like, put a comment up on the screen, which is what you've written. Because the way you usually do it is, like, you know, you'll you'll say something is bad, or you'll say you don't like something, and you'll be like, you know, oh, I'm not an idiot, you're like some people, and then you'll, like, flash a comment of, you know, like, the whole fucking, like, the whole kill yourself. <laughs> so fucking stupid. Yeah. It's like, it's so dumb, it's my fucking, it's my, it's my, it's my PS2 platformer review, and I'm, like, telling people to die, and, like, getting so angry, it's like... It's, I'm just seeing a bunch of energy and, like, you know, just a lot of emotion just being funneled towards something that's so fucking stupid. You know, it's not worth getting angry about. Mm -hmm. It's really not. Yeah, I know. But I think that, the, like, I don't think that the joke, like, as jokes they've aged well, because sure you can argue that it's like a joke what you say when you're talking about, like, I don't think this game is very good, you know, unlike some people. Like, I don't think that's a very good joke, but sure you could call it a yeah. joke. It's not what michael said then it's like the the comments that he shows that he has written you can tell that just based on the words that he uses in those That's the thing. If, like old fucking it, comments was, to other people was, yeah. you can tell that he if was... it was a joke it would be funny but they're not jokes like i'm very serious i'm very like i'm actually yeah. pissed off at these people which is why like it just reads so bad to me now it's like oh it's so not worth getting angry about it's so dumb you know mm -hmm. but yeah Either way, I do appreciate the question. So thank you to the thank you Homer yeah. Sam's for the question, and thanks to everybody else for the questions. Uh, th this was a bit of a lax episode. I didn't really have a whole ton to say about these reviews, but I had plenty of questions to answer, uh, and I enjoyed that. So mm -hmm. Liam, you got anything else you want to say for this episode? Um, not really. All I wanted to say was uh, favorite game.